All right, it is the week of June 14th, 2022, and we're here to tell you about all the new science fiction, fantasy, and horror books that are being published this week, starting on Tuesdays, because Tuesdays are where it's at, as far as book publishing goes. We have seven fantasy titles to tell you about, three science fiction titles, and one horror title, all hitting shelves this very now. Also, I'm filming this while traveling, please bear with me, because the ring light didn't make it into the suitcase, so if there's reflections on my glasses, funny shadows, we're just gonna have to cope with it, because I've already stolen all of the lights that aren't nailed down. And also, this is definitely yellow wallpaper, and I talked to Charlotte Perkins Gilman about it, and everything is fine, just like it was in that story. Let's look at fantasy titles first. From publisher Tor and author Catherine Addison, we saw The Grief of Stones in hardcover, ebook, and audio. This is a steampunk fantasy novel sequel to Witness for the Dead, being published simultaneously with the UK Solaris edition. Catherine Addison is a pen name for Sarah Manette, who a few years ago wrote a really lovely fantasy novel called The Goblin Emperor, which then won the Locus Award for Best Fantasy Novel and was a finalist for the Nebula, Hugo, and World Fantasy Awards. So the sequel, The Grief of Stones, is coming out this week and is an editor's pick on Amazon. The plot involves murder and scandal, a character whose job is communing with the deceased to solve their murders, and according to Publishers Weekly, the plot masterfully blurs the line between fantasy and mystery, and Addison turns her brilliant character building to the common folk of Amalo, fleshing out the citizens with heart-wrenching backstories and addressing and ameliorating the world's societal ills. Ahoy! We saw a pirate novel from author Laura Brooke Robeson and publisher Dial. We saw The Sea Knows My Name in hardcover, ebook, and audio. This is a YA fantasy novel. Our hero Thea is the daughter of a pirate mother, but she's lacking some of the ruthlessness that comes easily to her mom and has to figure out how to be strong in her own way. Kirkus put it this way. Thea's mother, Clementine, was a scientist until her research indicating the threat of an impending volcanic eruption in their island region was dismissed by male peers with devastating consequences. Rather than risk becoming a reproductive commodity for the survivors who fled to ancient Astorian ruins along the coast of a nearby continent, Clementine built herself and Thea a new home and legacy at sea. From best-selling writer Kevin J. Anderson and Neil Peart, yes, the same Neil Peart who was the drummer from Rush, we saw Clockwork Destiny out from ECW Press in hardcover, ebook, and audio. This is the third and final book in the Clockwork Angels series, and we've got airships, adventures, alchemy, carnivals, and lost cities. The Clockwork trilogy is based on the story and lyrics from the last Rush album, with Anderson and Peart expanding the world, stories, and characters. The two developed the final novel in the trilogy in the last years of Peart's life, and more than a year after his passing, Anderson returned to that unfair finished project with the full support of Pert's wife, bringing Owen and Marinda's stories to a satisfying and stirring conclusion. We saw the fantasy novel January 15th from renowned short story writer Rachel Swirsky and publisher Tor.com in trade paperback, ebook, and audio. This is an Amazon editor's pick, and the concept is that January 15th is the day all Americans receive a universal basic income payment. Some people use it in meaningful ways, like a middle-aged mother who is able to leave an abusive husband, and others find ways to be wasteful, and various other humans do human things with their money, because what is more human than inventing money anyway? Money is totally made up. Best-selling author John Scalzi calls this author one of the best speculative writers of the last decade. Rachel Swirsky received an MFA in fiction from the Iowa Writers' Workshop and has been nominated for the Hugo, Locus, and World Fantasy Awards and twice won the Nebula Award. Next up, we have urban fantasy novel Trouble with the Cursed from author Kim Harrison from Ace in hardcover, ebook, and audio from Publishers Weekly following 2020's Million Dollar Demon. The 17th installment of Harrison's Hollow series proves that heroine Rachel Morgan's adventures are far from over, with a new set of complications expanding her circle of influence and magical skills. After transforming the vampire Constance into a mouse, Witchborn demon Rachel acts in her name while secretly running Cincinnati with her partner in crime, Pike. As the demon Sub Rosa, Rachel is responsible for keeping the city's supernatural population in line, but her position remains tenuous. The author also writes fantasy novels as Dawn Cook. On to science fiction. 
from Del Rey and author Emily Skrutsky, we saw Vows of Empire in hardcover, ebook, and audio. Publishers Weekly said the intricate world building and pitch perfect characterization of Skrutsky's Bloodright space opera trilogy carries through to this final chapter after Oaths of Legacy for a wholly satisfying conclusion that immerses readers in the madcap adventures of rival emperors who love each other deeply. Skrutsky is the author of Oaths of Legacy. Bonds of Brass, Hull Metal Girls, The Abyss Surrounds Us, and The Edge of the Abyss. Next, I'll mention one horror novel we saw by author Coy Hall. It's called The Hangman Feeds the Jackal, and this book is coming out from Nose Touch Press in trade paperback, ebook, and audio. It's about a gunfighter who's worried about a hangman who's trying to kill him, and this is an aside, but my sense of American Western mythology is that the hangman's gotta go after someone and the gunman might be the rational target. At any rate, this is a gothic western horror novel. It's weird fiction, there's drifters, maybe there's a pile of money somewhere, and the hangman isn't the only thing our hero is afraid of. We also saw the thriller A Face to Die For from author Iris Johansson and publisher Grand Central in hardcover, ebook, and audio. Archaeologist Riley Smith is all about Helen of Troy, and she's trying to convince a sculptor to recreate the face that launched a thousand ships. This is a title in the Eve Duncan series. We've got Tomb Raiders, a treasure hunter, and maybe seeing Helen's face really is, like the title says, a face to die for. I like the multiplicity of puns in the title, as you remember Marlowe's line about the face that launched a thousand ships, which maybe our protagonists aren't the only ones who might be willing to die for Helen's face, because it seems like a lot of people would have to die to launch a thousand ships, because that means war. Okay, let's move on. That was, I'm getting way too deep into the tangent. Okay, quickly, I'll run through a few more titles so you know about them, but we'll move fast. From Inkyard Press and author Sasha Alsberg, we saw Breaking Time. This is a young adult fantasy time slip romance novel coming out in hardcover, ebook, and audio. Our hero Clara finds a Scotsman brought forward in time, which reminds me of that old joke about a real Scotsman. Are all real Scotsmen time travelers? I think we all know the answer is yes. From Daw and Michael W. Gear, we saw Implacable Alpha. This is an SF novel, the second in the Team Size series, in hardcover, ebook, and audio. Next, from Balzer and Bray and author C.J. Redwine, we saw Rise of the Vicious Princess in hardcover, ebook, and audio. This is a young adult fantasy novel, the first in a duology about a princess determined to bring peace to her kingdom despite the personal cost. What else? There's always more books. That's what's coming out this week, but we'd also like to tell you about a recent book or two we reviewed in Locus in case you missed it. The Unfamiliar Garden by author Benjamin Percy came out from Mariner Books in hardcover in January of this year. The plot involves a meteor shower, ritualistic murders, and the disappearance of a precious daughter. Locus reviewer Gabino Iglesias described the book like this. The Unfamiliar Garden is the second novel in Percy's Comet Cycle, which began with The Ninth Medal and ends in June of 2022 with The Sky Vault. However, reading the preceding novel is not a requirement to enjoy this one. The Unfamiliar Garden works perfectly well as a standalone novel, and it's one that speaks volumes about Percy's talent for creating worlds and then twisting them into something that feels entirely fresh. At once a dazzling science fiction story, a dark, gritty crime novel that dips its toes into horror, and a touching narrative about a broken couple learning to cope with a major loss while never giving up on their missing daughter, this is one of those rare novels that offers something for every kind of reader. The other recent title I want to bring up is Memories Legion, The Complete Expanse Story Collection by James S.A. Corey, which came out in March 2022 from Orbit US in hardcover. Our reviewer Russell Letson had this to say, the long main storyline of James S.A. Corey's Expanse series, nine volumes released over a decade, wrapped up with last year's Leviathan Falls. At various points along the way, though, Corey, aka Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank, produced shorter pieces that did not extend the main narrative but filled in some gaps before, between, and after its episodes. Now these stories, plus a new one, are collected in Memories Legion, along with authors' notes commenting on the genesis of stories and their places in the series. For example, story The Butcher of Anderson Station shows how Fred Johnson got that reputation and what set him on the path taken through the main body of the Expanse storyline. Like several other entries, it recognizes the ruthlessness with which organizations grind up individuals for some notion of a greater good or cause. From the start, this has been a series that acknowledges the human and the humane, even while fighting space battles, chasing and escaping, confronting monsters, alien and otherwise, and blowing stuff up. Thanks for watching. Locus covers genre books written in English and books translated into English, and we make an effort to cover everything related to science fiction and fantasy. Tell your friends, your librarian, your barista, I, I don't know, you your dentist? Why do they try to ask you questions when your mouth is full of like cotton and instruments and 
fingers. Last time I was at the dentist, I, I asked the hygienist if she knew any knock-knock jokes. And she thought about it for a second and then she said, why can't you take atoms at their word? Because they make up everything. Because they make up everything. Anyway, if your dental hygienist likes books, tell them to come check out our channel and subscribe. We are at Locust Magazine or at Locust Mag on all the places you would think to look for us. And if you'd like to know more about Locust Magazine, we cover SF, fantasy, horror, and YA books that are coming out. We do monthly book reviews, commentary, columns by people like Cory Doctorow, we interview authors, talk to artists, we report on writers' workshops and conventions, international publishing. We run a lot of photos of people and book covers, and the magazine has been doing that sort of stuff since 1968. If you want to understand what's happening in science fiction and fantasy, both now and recently, and what's about to happen next, we'll tell you about it. Go check us out at our website, www.locusmag.com. You can subscribe to the print magazine. Locus is available in a digital edition, or you can donate to what we do via our Patreon or direct donation. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. Come back and see us again soon, and we'll be here next week with more new books. About that reputation. I'll have to do that again. Gotta put the emphasis on the right syllable. Didn't have enough air to do that one. Okay. Almost that author made it almost to the end of the sentence before I goofed it. Okay. I think I nailed it. Look, you didn't see it the whole time. The whole time you didn't see it. That's not, you didn't, I, I did it. <laughs>